Welcome back to Football Daily for Transfer Talk, where now we're in July, the transfer market is really going to start hotting up. Let's get straight into all the latest news and gossip. We start with an update on Jack Grealish, just days after his instrumental impact off the bench in England's 2-0 victory over Germany at Euro 2020. The 25-year-old, who has two assists in just 116 minutes of football at this summer's tournament, has recently been linked with a big money move to Manchester City. Pep Guardiola's side are reported to have put together a package worth £100 million to take Grealish up the M6 to the Etihad Stadium. Aston Villa's acquisition of Emi Buendia from Norwich and their pursuit of Arsenal's Emil Smith-Rowe made it look like the Birmingham club were preparing for life after their captain. But noise coming from Villa Park suggests the sale of Grealish is not a foregone conclusion. In fact, the club believe they can tie him down to yet another contract extension, just 10 months after he last put pen to paper. Back in September, Grealish signed on until 2025, becoming their highest earner on a reported 100k a week. And Villa are more than happy to increase his baseline salary by 50%. This figure of 150k a week would put him on par with other attacking playmakers like Christian Pulisic, Bernardo Silva and Son Kyung Min. But of course, this does still require their talisman to turn his back on inevitable glory with City, in favour of cementing his status as a hometown legend. Proving as valuable for his country as he is for his club, Grealish has posted 29 goal contributions since Villa's return to the Premier League in 2019, with his 12 goals and 17 assists coming at a rate of one every two matches. Averaging 2.8 key passes, 2.3 dribbles and two shots a game in that period, he'd be a very valuable string in Guardiola's bow should any move come to fruition. However, it's clear that Dean Smith and Aston Villa won't let him go without a fight, and with no release clause in his current deal and no reason to sell either, they'll do everything in their power to keep Jack Grealish at the club. But where do you at home think England's number 7 will be playing football next season, in the Claret of Villa or the Sky Blue of City? As ever, you can let us know in the comments section. Now to Italy, where following Portugal's exit at Euro 2020, Cristiano Ronaldo has some decisions to make. Whilst it had previously been reported that Juventus were ready to let the 36-year-old go ahead of the change of regime in Turin, Max Allegri is, naturally, more than happy to keep the five-time Ballon d'Or winner. However, CR7's reputation is more than enough for him to decide his own future, with just 12 months remaining on his current deal. And the news? Well, no one really knows, but according to Tuto Sport, Ronaldo's intention is to update Juve this week. Manchester United, PSG and Sporting are the only clubs to have been seriously linked with Euro 2020's leading goalscorer, and one of those is the frontrunner should Ronaldo decide his future lies away from the Allianz Stadium. A return to Sporting after 18 years away might be a bit too soon for Ronaldo, who still wants to add a record equaling 6th Champions League trophy to his name, and besides, they are unlikely to have the financial package to compete with other interested parties. And between Manchester United and PSG, it seems that the more likely destination would be the French capital, putting to rest rumours of a return to Old Trafford. Tuto Sport reported that Ronaldo's decision would be between Max and the Sheik, referencing Allegri alongside PSG's Qatari owners. But Maurizio Pochettino's side, who have also been linked with Ronaldo's footballing nemesis Lionel Messi, have the small issue of Kylian Mbappe's future to sort out too. And whilst they do have resources, spending some 3 million euros a week on a sensational front line of Neymar, Mbappe and CR7 could be a step too far even for Le Parisien. And if Ronaldo ultimately does decide to stay in Italy, he will be handed a one-year extension to his current deal. But even then, you can have no doubts that Cristiano Ronaldo will still be in high demand. Just before we move on, make sure you're liked and subscribed to Football Daily with that notification bell switched on. We put videos like this out every day, so make sure you don't miss one of them. You can't talk Cristiano Ronaldo without talking about Lionel Messi, so that's what we're doing here. As the clock ticked from the 30th of June to the 1st of July, Messi officially became a free agent, ending an association with Barcelona that stretches back 21 years. In that time, the 34-year-old has scored 672 goals in 778 matches for the Blaugrana, winning 34 trophies including 10 La Liga titles and 4 Champions Leagues, and of course not forgetting his 6 Ballon d'Or triumphs. So, what next for the Argentinian? Right now, he is in pursuit of his first senior international trophy with La Albi Celeste at the Copa America. With the group stages complete, Argentina have qualified for the quarterfinals and will play Ecuador on Saturday evening. Messi, who currently leads the goal-scoring charts with three strikes, has also just become his country's most capped player of all time on 148 appearances. But beyond that, his future is less clear. Despite links with Manchester City and PSG, Barcelona have always remained confident of keeping their greatest ever player at the club, especially since the presidential election saw Joan Laporta take the reins at the Camp Nou for the second time. 
Negotiations are expected to continue into next week, with Barcelona having to accommodate Messi's wish to play in the MLS before he retires, although he is open to another challenge before then if the right opportunity arises. The club also needs to shed some 200 million euros off their annual wage bill in order to meet the FFP requirements imposed by the Spanish football authorities. So after a hectic year, Messi appears to be close to staying at Barcelona, but don't rule out the possibility of a club like City or PSG making a last minute play to bring the Argentinian to them instead. On to Sergio Ramos, a player who will definitely be changing clubs in the coming weeks. The 35-year-old came agonisingly close to signing a new deal at Real Madrid, but had the offer withdrawn by Florentino Perez at the last minute, allowing Ramos to become a free agent. The Spaniard had reportedly already been approached by three different sides, Bayern Munich, Manchester City and PSG. PSG have long been favourites to secure his signature, but appear to have run into the same stumbling block Los Blancos faced early on in negotiations, Ramos' demand for a two-year contract. Other than that, everything else seems in order. However, with nothing yet confirmed, Manchester City are still sniffing around, with Guardiola believing Ramos' experience could be the perfect complement to his rather young defensive core. Let's not forget, Imeric Laporte and John Stones both only turned 27 in May. However, the former Sevilla man is sceptical of moving to England because of his family. But that hasn't stopped Chelsea from making a move for the veteran, hoping they can replicate the successful deal that saw Thiago Silva join the club 12 months ago. However, it may be too late for Thomas Tuchel's side, as Ramos has apparently told some of his former Madrid teammates that his heart is set on Paris. We'll find out soon enough. Tottenham fans, get ready, as after being linked with Eric Ten Hag and Brendan Rodgers, attempting to lure back Maurizio Pochettino, almost agreeing terms of Antonio Conte, being hours away from announcing Paolo Fonseca before deciding to go with Gennaro Gattuso, only for fans to make their feelings on that move very clear, Spurs have finally found the man to replace Jose Mourinho. Nuno Espirito Santo was another name thrown about and Daniel Levy has finally succumbed to new sporting director Fabio Paratici's demands, choosing to back him over the hiring of the former Wolves boss. The Portuguese coach won 95 of his 199 matches in charge at Molyneux, although he saw victory in just 38% of the 114 Premier League matches he's overseen to date. Last month, Santo was close to taking over at Crystal Palace, the only Premier League side still without a manager, before making a series of late demands which saw the Eagles pull out of negotiations. No matter though, as he has found his place in the dugout on the other side of the Thames. Upon signing a two-year deal, Nuno said, It's an enormous pleasure and honour. We must start working immediately as pre-season is just days away. Levy also chimed in, adding, We would like to thank our supporters for all their patience throughout this process. I believe Nuno is the man who can take our talented group of players and build something special. Let's see how that pans out. We end this week with the news that Arsenal are reportedly ahead in the race to sign to swallow an Italy midfielder, Manuel Locatelli. The 23-year-old has impressed at Euro 2020 for the Azzurri, scoring twice in a 3-0 victory over Switzerland and is expected to move on this summer. Club sporting director Giovanni Carnavali told Sky Italia they were in discussions with Juventus over the sale of the former AC Milan star, who moved to the Nero Verdi first on loan in 2018-19, then permanently the following season. After confirming that Juventus were the only Italian club they were in contact with, he then added that there were plenty of interest from abroad, and that Arsenal are the only club so far to have actually submitted a bid for Locatelli. A signal of intent from the Emirates, as Mikel Arteta looks to develop his side after what was ultimately a disappointing season. Locatelli has already made over 150 appearances in Serie A, and has become a key member of the Italian side under Roberto Mancini. Is this the man that Arteta should be targeting to revolutionise Arsenal's midfield? Let us know in the comments. So that's it for another week of Transfer Talk. What do you make of these rumours? Can you see any of these going through? Will Arsenal actually sign a world-class midfielder in Manuel Locatelli? You know what to do. Meanwhile, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.